Okay, this is part eight in my nine-part series on Piaget and cognitive development. Here we are looking at developmentally appropriate practice or developmentally appropriate education. When we look at developmentally appropriate practice, age appropriateness, social and cultural, and individual appropriateness. We're going to look at age appropriateness since we are looking at Piaget and cognitive development. Linda Darling Hammond says strong teacher preparation is the foundation for developmentally attentive teaching. That means we have knowledge of child development. We are able to then create settings in which children flourish. Now the school in instruction, as I have said again and again and again and again, should be built upon children's natural developmental disposition towards learning. That way both the teacher and the student are putting their energy toward a learning goal instead of having an adversarial relationship. There should be balance between chosen work and required work. Choice is important. Now this does not mean total choice all the time, but neither does it mean no choice. It means some choice some of the time in what to learn, how to learn, and how to demonstrate learning. Young children, as I've said again and again and again and again, play. Children learn through play. They take on roles they see adults doing. This play has cognitive payoffs in the long run and emotional payoffs. Young children, they learn by experimenting, by messing around, by seeing how the physical world operates. At this age, emotion supersedes logic. They are coming to know the world through their emotions. That's why they can listen to green eggs and ham many, many times. It's not a logical experience. It's an emotional experience. And that's why telling a scary story is not a good idea because it's really scary to them. They're experiencing on an emotional level. Instructionally, we should have short periods of whole group instruction, but a lot of individual or independent work or projects. At the kindergarten and preschool level, yes, there is direct instruction, but it should be short periods. Developmentally, they're not ready to sit for 15, 20 minutes listening to someone. This idea of back to the basics that started in the 80s, this was not based on good research, of course. We thought drill and skill and we'd start younger and they'd be further ahead. Well, there's no longitudinal data to support that the idea that back to the basics improves education, has improved education. Nothing to support it. And this idea that if we start reading earlier, they're going to be further ahead. Or if we give them more of something, they'll be better. And again, there is no longitudinal data to say starting reading instruction earlier is going to pay off down the road. There is quite a bit of research to say that reading instruction should not begin before the age of six. Now, this is formal reading instruction. There's a lot of messing around with books and exploring books that happens in preschool and kindergarten, but formal instruction, phonics instruction, uh, this does not mean you have don't have incidental learning, but this formal learning where you have worksheets. Kindergarten, no. First grade, yes. That's when you began to start. That's when they are developmentally ready. That is developmentally appropriate instruction. And again, more of something or something earlier does not mean better or further along the road. Children in the post-primary and intermediate grade, what is developmentally appropriate? They need to explore many topics and many subjects to find their interests, their strengths, things they are good at, things they can do well. They learn by doing. They need to experience, act upon the world, not simply listen and receive. And some teachers say, you are not, you make poor choices. Well, children need practice making choices. Not choice all the time, but some choices. Do you want to do this or do you want to do that? 